All right. Uh, well, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Lindsay Meesh, and I'm Executive Director at Massachusetts Designer Technology Institute, also known as DATMA. And uh, this summer, we've moved forward with having exhibitions about light, and uh, that was inspired about New Bedford's history of the city that once lit the world, and also um, relating to what's happening with New Bedford and this region tomorrow with uh, the efforts of green energy and wind energy. And um, so that's a little bit how we all came here tonight. And uh, the way that um, this wonderful um, event got started, uh, lighting your home and your art. And um, uh, it, it all started, I think about a year ago when I walked into this fantastic, um, I don't even wanna just call it a store, it's a boutique, it's a gallery. It's where I try not to bring my wallet because it's very tempting all the time. Uh, the drawing room, which is located in the historic district of New Bedford, um, it's run by um, Anthe Frangiatis, and uh, she's an architect and interior designer and has an amazing eye. So this event, um, uh, Lighting Your Home, is uh, hosted with the drawing room and really began about a year ago, maybe more, when I first walked into the drawing room and I saw amazing handcrafted goods and I said to Anthe, you know what I wish that more people handcrafted uh, or at least designed really thoughtfully was lighting? And she said, oh, they do. And she walked me to the back room where there's this beautiful hand-blown chandelier from these glass blowers in Rhode Island. Just, I was so excited to know that uh, there was someone who could quench my thirst with lighting. And um, thankfully, Anthe has um, other folks that she gets into trouble with regarding lighting and you're gonna meet them tonight. And so for me, this is just a continuation of uh, this conversation that we began over a year ago. And um, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, without further ado, please allow me to introduce you to Anthe Frangiatis, who is the owner of a fabulous shop in New Bedford called The Drawing Room. Thank you, Lindsay. It's so nice to see you and everyone else this evening. I'm really happy to have this opportunity to share some fabulous light fixtures like the one that we just saw. That one was actually crafted by Providence Art Class. Um, and this evening we're going to be walking through some more fixtures um, and some technical information about lighting your home. I've, um, I'm a big believer in bringing a good team with me. Um, so I have two team players uh, to introduce this evening and we can go through some basics on lighting, hopefully inspire you to um, do something fabulous with light. Um, I have Evelyn Audette in the upper right hand corner. Hi, Evelyn. Hello. Uh, Evelyn is a lighting designer based in Rhode Island and she and I have had the opportunity to work together on several uh, design projects on, in Southeastern Mass and Rhode Island. Um, and in our lower left, uh, we were joined by Jeff Pomeroy of Light New England. Uh, hi, Jeff. Uh, Jeff is based in Boston. He has a to the trade showroom for visual comfort lighting. You'll hear a lot more about that this evening. Um, and most, most special, I think, is Jeff is gonna give us a walking tour of the showroom, um, which not everyone gets to see all the time. Well, I get to see it all the time, but most other well, <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> that's true. So, Lindsay, I was really happy to have an opportunity to walk with you and Liz a couple of weeks ago and see some of the installations in downtown New Bedford. I was really, um, I was really struck by Sunny Park's piece, uh, the one in the storefront windows. It's the corner of, is it Pleasant? Yeah. Uh, it Pleasant. was street. Uh, Pleasant and Union. It's at the University of Massachusetts uh, CVPA building downtown um, that a lot of people from New Bedford call the Star Store because it was once the Star Store. And um, Sonny's work is going to be on show for um, about another month until September 14th. So if you haven't seen the work, um, I welcome you to go and, and look at it. It's uh, You're able to view it in a safe and social distance way. Um, it's viewed from outside the gallery, and um, I, I recommend checking it out in daylight hours, but it's a whole other world in the evening, um, so it's quite captivating. And um, I think it hopefully is. Do you, have 
since you said that on our tour, I've actually been paying attention to it at different times of day as I've been moving through the city. It's been um, really interesting to see that. So um, I think uh, a few a few topics that we'd like to cover this evening and Evelyn can will start on it. Um, I'll just go over three broad issues that we're gonna talk about when it comes to lighting. Um, one has to do with placement, one has to do with color, and one has to do with temperature of lighting. Um, so there are a variety of different ways that we're going to be um, explaining those to you. Evelyn is going to get started with different types of lighting, um, and then we can go from there. If anyone has any questions, you're welcome to include them in the comments to us. We'll do our best to get them answered while we have our team of experts. Great. Thank you, Anthony. Um, and welcome, everyone. I'm glad you're here, and I'd like to give you a little bit of information about lighting and um, try not to get too carried away because it's a huge topic and there's a lot of information. Um, and I really like talking about lighting and sharing the knowledge that I have gained in the um, over 30 years that I've been in the industry. So when we are lighting our homes, we are trying to create a lighting um, experience, not just put a light bulb or a lamp into the space, but we want it to create emotion, provide us with our general lighting, which we call our ambient lighting. Um, our task lighting is placing the light where we need it. And what, uh, I always take into consideration what the people are doing so that we can put the light reducing in the location that we do reduce as much shadowing as possible um, for whatever task it is that we're accomplishing in the space. Our accent lighting is when we are lighting our architectural details, materials, art, sculpture, um, that create the interest in the space. So when we take those three elements of what we're trying to do with our light, and then we add in our decorative fixtures, which I call the icing on the cake or the jewelry after we've lit the space, we um, end up with a layer, layers of lighting. And when we have at least two or three different layers of lighting, and then we add in dimmers, um, now we've created flexibility in a room or in a home, the space that is almost limitless because we can turn off the ambient lighting, turn up the task lighting, uh, put the accent lighting dimmed, and then just the variations from that. Um, I'm not a great mathematician, but you it's exponential on the different uh, scenes uh, that you can create. Um, and that's what we're looking to do. Uh, lighting affects our mood and our energy, and it, it can create an entirely different atmosphere by just changing your lighting around. Um, so it's extremely important to our health, our well-being, and um, our energy, not only in our own uh, selves as human beings, we're extremely affected by light, but then we consider our energy consumption of lighting, uh, which is extremely important. And that's why the LEDs were brought to the consumer. So you mentioned earlier, Evelyn, about reducing the amount of shadows in task lighting. Yes. Um, is there a, any situation where you would want to increase the amount of shadows that lighting is creating? Um, and that would be in our accent lighting. Uh, absolutely, shadows are important. And in landscape lighting, especially, shadows are, are, are a great uh, tool that we use. And, and adjusting lighting and how we're um, creating the space in our accent lighting or uh, lighting a three-dimensional object, something with texture, we do want to place our light so that we are putting light as well as shadows. And a great example of that would be a technique which we call grazing. So if we're lighting a stone wall, we want the light oh, yeah. very close to it so that we're highlighting the protrusions of the stone and that will also create shadows and that makes the texture. Yeah. yeah, there's actually a building here in downtown New Bedford that you had worked on um, that has an example of those stone, that stone lighting. Um, there's a staircase with a piece of artwork that you were lit, that you were lighting. And I think that, I think that shows grazing very well. I don't know if Liz, you have that photo, you can pop up for us on the screen. Um, you can do that at any time. We can go through the, oh, 
I think she may have it there. Yes, that's exactly so, the photo. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Yeah. <laughs> um, Liz, yes. So um, the texture in this space was extremely important, the stone, and then the um, client also had a great art collection. And this is very close to the drawing room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great building. Yes. So, sorry for jumping in with a the question there. We can go back. No, that's not <laughs> Um, I want to just mention it has some of the best ambiance in town, and I haven't been able to put my finger on why. So it makes the wine taste extra it's good. It's the lighting. <laughs> it's a lot to do with the lighting. Um, so when we're selecting lighting, um, we are looking at um, different aspects and selection of the um, kinds of light, kinds of measurements that we need uh, to select lighting. And in and, and LED uh, technology, which is a light emitting diode, um, it's an electronic device. Um, it's basically uh, a circuit board that emits light. And what the consumer has had to learn about the um, LED lighting is all the things that we are have to know to be able to select the proper light. And one of the most important, I believe, is the color temperature. Um, and we'll get into that in detail. So the color temperature of the light has a huge range and it's it's measured in Kelvin. The um, What's confusing for the consumer is that we have, any of us that are older than a teenager, um, a young teenager, we grew up with the legacy lamps, which are our incandescent and our halogen. And we would select those by wattage. So if you think about you selected a 60 watt light bulb and that was your criteria for you knew how much light you needed, you knew that that would work in your lamp. Well, wattage has been reduced significantly with the um, LEDs and which is a good thing because that's the energy that we consume without lighting and what we pay the electric company. So the wattage we want to be as low as possible, but get as much output uh, as possible from that energy usage. So that's our output and that's measured in lumens. And that's a very important measurement for the consumer to understand because they're not gonna purchase a 60 watt light bulb anymore. It might be a 5-point, eight watt or um, you know a 6.2 watt light bulb that's going to give you the amount of lumens that we would be equivalent to about a 60 watt light bulb. So the lower the wattage, the, the less energy that's consumed, is that correct? Yes, wattage is the energy that, that, is, con that is consumed. It's the what energy is needed to generate that light. Yeah. Right. And then the higher the lumens, the brighter the light. Or more the output. more light it's emitting, okay. More output. Right, that is, that is different than from when we were growing up. Yes, very much <laughs> so. And then what happens with color temperature, I'll get a lot of clients say to me, oh, I don't like LED, it's so blue. Because especially when it came out, the um, we as consumers were um, approached from the rear by the, I think it was the Audi, um, bright blue headlights <laughs> they were coming after us and everybody's like that's led we don't want it well the led can be um selected in um color temperature that's very warm like candlelight um to high um, coloring um a couple more slides and to a color temperature that is very cold and cold. So this is a great um, um that. got a little bit of feedback here. But um so what this is showing is the light bulb itself. So a lot of the um we call them the legacy lamps, so a high pressure sodium, the standard incandescent bulb that we all grew up with, that 60 watt bulb, is at a 2700 Kelvin temperature. On this, it looks very yellow, almost orange. Halogen is 3000 Kelvin. That happens to be my favorite color temperature. And to the naked eye, it is, or to a human eye, I should say, it is um, more of a pure white. When you get warmer, a, a higher number, um, 
it's the opposite of our Fahrenheit measurements, we get cooler temperature. So um, when we say we want a daylight light bulb, that is a misnomer because um, it's then the other slide that I have, if we can pull that up, showing um, the color temperatures has a, um, this is great because this shows how sunset um, and the warmer color, colors that a candle is like 1800 Kelvin temperature. And then when you say, okay, I want daylight. So I always ask, what, what hemisphere are you in? What's the time of the year? What's the time of the day? What is the weather? So if we're looking at morning and afternoon light, that's when we're in that 3000 to 4000 Kelvin temperature. Um, if you're a hazy overcast day, you're up at like 6,000 um, open shade at noon, you're really getting up there. Um, dust tonight, look at cooler. It's a real cold light. You don't want to live in your home under that kind of lighting. Um, nor do you really want to be in that warm, warm light, um, like the 1800 or, or warmer than that Kelvin temperature because it's going to, everything's going to turn red. <laughs> so, um, we want to be really careful with the color temperature that you pick and anything that's the 2700 to 3000 is great for a residential uh, color to check to uh, select your LED light bulb. So another measurement, this is uh, great because this is um, CRI, which is your color rendering index which is completely different than the color of light because you can have a 2700 color LED light and with a low color rendering index. So low would be about 70. It's a rating from like zero to 100, but a 70 CRI and LED would turn this apple kind of um, purplish and um, it looks appetizing, but when you put it next to a hundred CRI, that is affecting, that is the real color of that apple. Um, so the color rendering index measures the color that, uh, excuse me, the light, the way the light is affecting the object, projecting back the true color. So it's, um, it's very interesting. And those measurements are on all of our labels. So if we look at the label when you're going into the store to buy an LED, um, you're going to find a lot of these measurements. How about the other slide um, that we can take a look? Here we go. So here's our lighting facts. Now, I just told you about the um, watts. So we've got our lumens. If we look at the top left, we've got our light output, which is our lumens. This is telling us it's 840 lumens. Watts, this is telling us nine watts. So that's we're burning in energy. Um, lumens per watt, they're giving us an uh, uh, efficacy measurement um, of 93, which is great. So we're getting a lot of output for a little bit of energy. And that's telling us how um, our efficient, how efficient this light is. Um, the color accuracy, that is the color rendering index. So there's an 87. Remember I said it's 70 is low and 100 is the best. In LEDs, we're not getting a lot of the 100 color rendering index. Um, that was the, our original measurement through incandescent. And um, we, don't, we, we can get up in the high 90s, but not necessarily up to 100 with, with LED um, that I've seen anyway. Um, the color, correlated color temperature, the CCT, um, is here is your Kelvin scale. It's showing you with that arrow where this light falls in. So it's um, just about 3,000 Kelvin, um, 2,900 warm white. So that's a, a very good chart and a very good measurement for you. It gives you the IESNA. The IES is the Illuminating Engineering Society, and they do our measurements for lighting, and they kind of have our, the uh, um, textbook, the Bible of lighting. And they are telling us that LM79-2008 is the testing that this product went through. It's an mm -hmm. Energy Star product, and they've registered that number um, for the model and type. So the lighting facts label, it should be on every package of every LED product, uh, 
light bulb and such that you buy. And then on the back of the box, so the other side of the box, the other label. So here, this one, it's not the same label, <laughs> um, but it's giving you brightness of 1300 lumens, your cost to purchase, I mean, to um, your energy cost and um, your life. And this, I think, was a um, a compact fluorescent bulb, not an LED. And I put this on here because when the compact fluorescents came out, they got a real bad rap because they weren't living up to the expectations of the consumer. And one of the reasons they weren't is because, see that based on three hours a day of the life, we weren't getting the life expectancy out of the compact fluorescents because they were never designed to go on and off like you would do in a hallway. So all the life expectancy is measured based on the number of hours a day the light is on. So the compact fluorescents were supposed to be on for a three hour minimum. And in a residential application, they were not. Um, and people didn't know how to buy them. They didn't know how to buy the color temperature. So there's lots of information on these um, on the packages when you go to buy a um, an LED replacement light bulb or a product. And now you should be able to at least look at this label and not be intimidated and have an idea of what all of these um, uh, measurements mean. So one of the things that you and I have talk about or one of the best descriptions you gave me about color rendering index when we were working on a project, we were actually working um, in a client's master closet. And you explained to me that, correct me if I'm wrong, that the higher the color rendering index, closer to a 90, you can tell the difference between a black and a navy. Exactly. That, do I remember that correctly? So yeah. that's, the, that's the example that I always try to use and or remember because there are many times when I'm staring at something going, is that black or navy? Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, you change, change the light on it and you can tell. Absolutely. So that's what that color rendering index is doing is, is giving you, we're able to see the true colors of what the product was intended to be. Yeah. And um, when you're lighting art, a high color rendering index is really important because the artist intended, and he used materials, he or she used materials that were to project a color to our eyes. And if we light a piece of art with a bad color rendering index product, then you're not going to get the full effect of the piece of art because um, we need to, to pull out the colors that the artist intended it to be. Lindsay and I were chatting earlier about, you said it so well, the misnomer of daylight um, bulbs. She and I both fell victim to that. So um, it turns out when I just, I recently removed them and replaced them with LED replacements with a suggestion that you had made, Evelyn. Um, and when I pulled out the daylight bulb that I had put in, I looked at the pack, the, you know, the surround on the label. It was 5,000 Kelvin. Yes, yes. Which is so such a misnomer. Blue, cold light mm -hmm. that you yeah. are in, the, in the measurement. Um, yeah, and, and there's a lot of marketing out there that one of the things that they did when the LEDs came out is daylight lighting. We're all going to look better under it. Not yeah. as well, but you've experienced who, who doesn't want daylight, especially with winters in New England? Exactly. Um, and then the other was that it's going to last forever. Um, yeah, the they, I really not. think that they should call daylight bulbs like awkward office lighting. <laughs> exactly. And then no one would buy it. Right. Because you know what I mean when I say awkward office awesome. lighting. Yes. And that, don't get me off on a tangent here, but <laughs> when I started in the industry with our legacy bulbs, fluorescence came out in 1901. And fluorescence have always been available in all the different color temperatures like LEDs are now. It's not a new um, concept. It's, it's not new measurements. But what happened was the commodity product for the fluorescent was the cool white fluorescent light bulb, which was the 41, 4200 color temperature and, and a very low, like in the 70s, color rendering index. And what happened was everyone used it. It was a commodity product that used in offices throughout the country. 
And um, so my clients would say all the time, oh, I hate fluorescent. And the reason they hate fluorescent is because it didn't show the true colors of any product they were working with, the color of their skin, the color of their clothing. And um, it was a, a terrible color to be under. Everything was a blue gray. So it was unfortunate that fluorescent's got such a bad rap like that because fluorescent is a really interesting light to use. So yeah, interesting. On a recent trip that I made up to Jeff's showroom, um, we were looking at a variety of different light bulbs and different shapes. And he was showing me different ways of um, changing the look and feel of a fixture by doing different shape bulbs. And I know we have that one slide of yours, Evelyn, that has the standard light bulb shape. Yeah. If we could um, just pull that one up just for sizing and then um, maybe switch over to Jeff. Um, I think and, Liz is pulling um, it up right now. One question while, that, like, while that's being pulled up is, you know, there are these beautiful shapes, but are they just as energy efficient now, even though they have these unique qualities to them? Um, Yes. So our most energy efficient product is um, an LED module. So that is um, the fixture itself is designed for LED. Um, but what happens is we still like, uh, and most of us have lamps and fixtures that have the standard socket. So they've developed products that have um, all the benefits of the LED fixture that are encased in a, a bulb and a socket that we can use in the fixtures that we own or our new fixtures that we still like that look. Um, so it's a much more it stays with the tradition, but they still have the um, efficiency, much more efficient than the incandescent bulb or the halogen that we would normally use. Um, so, so when you say the LED bulb, module, there we go. Here we go. So Perhaps. I, missed my samples, my cue for my. Um, <laughs> so that's an LED, Jeff? That's, that's this an, is LED. an LED, correct. Yes, you yeah. can see, if you see up close here, you can kind of see the LEDs in there. Right. So. It's like um, a regular bulb. And the. Um, oh, she walked away. <laughs> she's, going for, she's going for some of those props. <laughs> so there she comes. An LED in itself is basically a um, a see the little square right there. That's one LED. It's a light emitting diode, and they put it on a circuit board. This one happens to be encased in plastic for samples, but a light emitting diode is nothing more than that one little LED piece and it's a it's a, a circuit board with phosphor on it it gets electrified and the phosphor lights up so this is an led strip when we talk about a module it basically is taking these leds and configuring them into um a circle or a linear um to make up a filament or um a disc that it's the same thing it's just phosphor and a circuit board so then we put them into lots of shapes. So we can go to that slide that shows the um, light bulb measurement. Because one of the things that we have to decide when we're looking at a light bulb is will it fit? So um, our measurements of light bulbs have always been in eight inches. So when we talk about a 60 watt bulb, it's a medium base, that's the socket, and A19 means it's 19 eighths of an inch. Um, and that bulb that Jeff was holding up for us is an A19 light bulb. So we have the T10 um, and T12s and um, through a walkthrough through Jeff's showroom, I think he's going to show us some of those. And um, so it's, you pick out, that's one of the measurements of the many, which I have a slide of a, a whole list of measurements that we use um, in picking out the shape and um type of light bulb we want now we call it a light bulb really the technical term is a lamp and we have voltage uh, which our residents are 120 volt wattage is what we burn the base is what it's going to fit into the bulb is the glass part 
diameter. So the shape is the bulb shape. Is the bulb shape? Yep. Yeah, because there are there are all kinds of curly cues, uh, and candle shape, and uh, tube shape. Actually, I know Jeff has some of those to show yeah. us as well. So the di diameter we looked at, filament shape. Um, you'll see from Jeff's showroom some filament shapes. The filament is what the um, in our incandescent bulb what burned. Um, so now they're making LED circuit boards in different shapes. We have color temperature we talked about, color rendering index. Foot candle is a measurement, but that's more of when the light is hitting a surface. surface. We measure the light on the surface. Um, lumens is the output. Um, the lamp life we looked, we didn't really talk about, but that's another real uh, part of the um, energy benefit of our LED lamps is they have a much longer life than our incandescent, um, significantly longer, years and years longer. Um, and then we measure the efficacy, which we talked about, which is how much light we get out of it for the wattage that we burn. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of and, and that's a brief overview. That's a brief <laughs> overview. <laughs> There's a lot to know about lighting. So I know I know Jeff that um, you have a collection of a lot of fixtures to share. Um, yes. I don't know if you have the tabletop piece where you're sitting right now for the art, the tabletop easel top piece. I'm I'm going to walk to it because I couldn't plug it in here. Okay, uh, and then the other one. Be appropriate to light it. <laughs> I just I didn't right. want to be that guy. Like so you, I know at your conference table where you're sitting, you have a very interesting LED light that um, has some good combination of traditional lines as well as contemporary lines, and it's completely yes. LED lit. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. A Could dedicated you LED. show us? <laughs> I will do that. All right. So technically, we have to go really slow. I have to walk like I'm going to modeling school. Uh, yes. Okay. Can't or look. walk like you're a groomsman. Oh my God, yep. look at that shop. Look <laughs> at <laughs> that. Can you see up there? So at, at, a, at any given time, I think you you see in your cone of vision, you have to see at oh, least 50 lights. So this is, one, uh, this is one of my favorite lights that Jeff has in his showroom. And what's interesting about it is that it's a chandelier that has a very traditional um, shape, but it's a, an LED light. And I know we have some photos of it that we could share. It's a little bit difficult to discern in the showroom and on video. Um, here it is now. This is by, is Tech Lighting, is that correct, Jeff? That's right. And Tech Lighting is now part of the Visual Comfort and Company group. So that, that's essentially why it's here. But this is the Tech Lighting brand. That's great. And can you tell us a little bit about the visual com visual comfort group? I can, sure. So visual comfort itself. Are we going back to me or are we talking over this? Just so I know if I should turn this around. Uh, you can do either. Whatever you're most comfortable with. Whatever I'm comfortable with. I'm comfortable if you're comfortable. What do you think of that? Uh, visual, visual Comfort uh, actually started in lighting the year before I did. It started in 1987. Uh, visual Comfort came from... The visual comfort index, which Evelyn will tell you, is something that is on commercial lighting specifications. A lot of people think visual comfort is looking at the light, but really it's not the light itself. It's the, the light that it puts out. And is, are, do you feel comfortable with the light? And that was the concept of visual comfort. Hmm. So uh, back in 2017, it merged with a couple of other major uh, classic lighting companies. One of them is Tech Lighting, which was founded by Greg Kay who was a master electrician who was, was specialized in systems and they had recess lighting and more like um, technical and specification grade lighting. And then, and then we have uh, uh, generation lighting, which covers uh, Feist and Seagull product, which are retail friendly, popular price goods and builder level products. So it's kind of a whole package now, but it all started with, with, with uh, visual comfort is, is, is the brand. So well, and one of the things that you, one of the things that you have explained to me about the visual comfort line is that if the if a visual comfort light fixture says it's a certain material, it is that real material. So, for instance, if you find a wall sconce that says it's alabaster, you're actually getting an alabaster wall sconce. 
as Correct. opposed to a material, a simulated material that looks like alabaster. That's so they are, use, they are using true materials and have a variety of designers. That's exactly right. Yeah, so the, those are the two things that make Visual Comfort different than, than other companies. First of all, is we have real genuine designers designing product. They're not just designing like most lighting companies, you know, they'll design like 20 to 30 things at a market and they'll release them where Visual Comfort uses real genuine designers that we partner with that design the product, everything from the canopies that go up to the ceiling, to the chain, to the finials on top of the lamps. And we use real material, so we use real brass. If we use plate nickel, we put plate nickel on brass. Uh, we use real alabaster, real coarse, real leather. We use all real natural materials. Very good. So I didn't mean to interrupt our, our walking tour. I just oh, wanted to ask no you that question. So do you want to give a, give us a whirl around Let's slowly? Do Let's do it slowly. <laughs> yes, you'll have to direct me. So. You tell me what if I'm doing something wrong, okay? I'm going to move to the right. right now. You ready? Yes. Going slow here. Going to try to go slow. Okay. All right. So first, let's go over to uh, some of the tech lighting section over here. And uh, did you, uh, you wanted to take a look at the Mina from that bath light, right? Nancy? Yes. So one of the exciting, one of the exciting things about being in the showroom is sometimes you recognize a light fixture that you've used in a project and that one right there <laughs> stop please there we go uh that is a pendant that evelyn and i happen to use in a powder room project um which i think we may have um, a photo of that liz will pull up here shortly but uh pendants are not often used in powder rooms um in this particular case, we had a sloped ceiling as well as a flat ceiling. And we ended up um, on the wall, we used a very tailored wallpaper. Um, so we ended up drop, it made sense to drop a pendant over the pedestal sink and drop one over the loo. So there, if we can enlarge that just a little bit, um, there's the tech lighting pendant. Um, in a different finish than what Jeff has it in the showroom. But it's a good mix. I find it to be a good mix of traditional and contemporary design. So there is a second one over the pedestal sink. Yeah, so the cool thing about the Mina is, is they actually take a laser and they etch cut with what appears to be a globe on the inside and the LED above it. I don't know if we can capture it. I'll try it by going a little closer here. LED, right. <laughs> don't Oops. walk LED. into anything, Jeff. I know. It'll <laughs> so Jeff, this is a great example of this. The fixture, the Mina has a, an LED module and that fixture that's next to it with the filaments, the scrolly filament, what they're doing. So that's a filament shape. How about this one? So uh, no, that, the one, one above. that one. There it is. That one. So it's so just a good example side by side when we talk about filaments and a module. Yep. All right, moving right along. Moving right along. Moving right along. On our tour. All right, here we go. Okay, there's some more tech lighting. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we'll go this way. <laughs> I love this sure. place so much. <laughs> I'm, wow. I'm looking forward to having you back. Can't wait. How do I get to come? Anytime you want. You have to be super nice. Okay. So here's a designer that most of us will recognize, Ralph Lauren. And one of the things I was really excited about is this particular light fixture that Jeff is showing us. It's, um, I'm constantly trying to figure out new ways to display artwork in the shop as well as home and other people's homes. Um, this happens to be a tabletop easel um, with, with, it's a plug-in fixture um, where you place the artwork on the shelf and then the light turns on above. So this could be placed on a hall table, a um, desk, or in a library. I'm really excited about it. Jeff, is this a painting of yours? <laughs> this is a painting of one of my children. I wish I could credit them. I'm not sure which one of them painted it. And I, they weren't home when I left. <laughs> Good choice. 
whatever. Uh, so this this comes in, this comes in different finishes, I believe. This what we're looking at is a polished nickel. Am I seeing that correctly? That's correct. It's polished nickel, and it comes in antique brass as well. Very nice. That's All right. great. All right, we'll move on from one. the Ralph collection. Okay. There's actually more Ralph. We'll do a. Oh, okay. I, sorry. It's okay. No problem. <laughs> Trying to go slow, trying to go slow. So there's some Incredible. more things over here. A lot of the uh, Ralph uh, looks that they have in their collection uh, are reflected in the lighting as well. So there's kind of like the Montauk Long Island look. Uh, they have a quite lot of equestrian. Uh, Ralph uses a lot of leather in their lighting as well. So you'll see that just like in their equestrian kind of look. And, in know, terms of the back plates or the shades or where? All kinds of things. So let me show you an example. Let's go over to Riley here. Oop. All right, here's Riley. Here's Riley. Okay. There, right there. There. Mm -hmm. So that's actually real leather stitched on the canopy and on the shade. So that's okay. brown. And does it come in different colors? It does. So that's brown saddle leather with antique brass. It comes in... Uh, uh, chocolate leather with polished nickel, or you can also get it in navy leather with antique brass, which is really pretty. It's just beautiful. And so there's also, you know, we have, the, you know, in terms of like the nautical, there's a lot of that. Like that's the Chatham wall light right there. And that's the grand that. outdoor rated. All right, let's go over here. Speaking of Chatham, a lot of people really like the Chatham pendant which is right there so that's a fresnel lens like a lighthouse um and uh that's it's a really classic big, solid glass it's really beautiful that's better to see in person but a lot of people like that all right so moving right along okay slow slow walk <laughs> i this may not surprise you but i don't have any i don't have any uh experience in modeling <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Shocker. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right, so here's here's an example. Like uh, we uh, group everything by designer, so you can kind of see some of them here. Like so, so this is Suzanne Kassler over here, Atlanta designer. Some of her things. I'll try to step back so you can see it better. And in this particular section, you have a lot of flush mount ceiling lights. Yes. I know Evelyn has uh, used quite a few of them. Yep. This seemed to be a good collection of them. Absolutely. Yes, they great. And a lot of times they come in different sizes. Right, yes. Jeff? That's yeah. true. And, and a lot of ours do come in different sizes. Flush mounts are one of those things where it, a lot of them don't look good. So Visual Comfort does a great job in, in good looking flush mounts. So then we go into here, we go into Kelly Wurstler. Chandelier right there. That's crack, crackle glass right there. I know you will get to it a little bit later in your walking tour, but mm -hmm. the uh, one of the things I was very excited about with the visual comfort table lamps mm -hmm. is that they offer a, some of them offer a dimmer switch. Yes, um, on the on the table lamp itself. So I know when you get to the Julie O'Neill um, section, I will share and turn on the light. All right, sounds good. Okay, so this is can any can any light that you have be converted into a dimmer if you buy a dimmer switch? Not any, but most we can. If this is a lot of our dimmers are on sockets, so as long as it joins us, so more often than not, we can do something for you. But most of the um, pendants and sconces and ceiling fixtures, almost all of them can be dimmed. Isn't that right, Jeff? That's correct. But That's it right. also depends on the lamp, correct? Correct. Or no? That's correct. So we have a lot of sockets that are traditional sockets, traditional incandescent sockets, but, you know, we can use dimmable LED bulbs in them. And that's something important when you're selecting your, um, re, you know, light bulbs with a socket, your LED replacement bulbs. Ooh, we have a flashing one. I just they will that. tell you. I, <laughs> <saw that. laughs> I think I think you must have friends with you, Jeff, in the showroom. You know what that is? That's the magic of live broadcasting, right there. <laughs> 
So if you could stop for a minute at that particular yeah. chandelier with the canopies. Yeah. So this is an excellent example of, uh, in my opinion, a, a very classic chandelier. Um, and we do have a separate photograph of it that I think Liz is going to pull up here in a second just to give you a glimpse of it. And again, um, available in different finishes. This one is the antique brass. Woo. We got that one on top of that one. Well, let me see if I can wrap it up. Yeah, so that, ooh, that's, a, that's a little interesting. <laughs> there we go. So. Guess which one's the real one. The, ma the magic the magic of live broadcasting. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you showed it next to the wanted live because I, I the one hanging in the showroom looks incredible and I don't really see the magic when it's just in that image. Right. Yeah, yeah it's um it's hard to portray a lot of these things on in the virtual world. Finish. I don't know if I can I'm gonna try to get up on close so you can kind of see this is a guild finish. Yeah, that's good. And they actually put uh, guild right on the stage. That's actually we're having a little bit of a hard time hearing you, Jeff. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. You, you just, I think we just got very far away for a second. Okay. Uh, that's actually guild on the shades too, which makes it really cool. So the designer uh, of this light is Aaron Lauder, who is Estee Lauder's granddaughter. Uh, has a whole entire home collection, beautiful home collection, and and in the uh, uh, visual comfort uh, makes the lighting for Aaron. We're about to go into Aaron's collection now. Actually, uh, this is Thomas O'Brien here. Okay, and we'll go into Aaron next. Is she the only granddaughter of Estee Lauder? I'm sorry. Is she the only granddaughter? I that I do not know. I'm not sure about uh -huh. that. <laughs> Some I, of I these lights Estee have Lauder's granddaughter. I can tell you that. Uh, this is uh, Peter Bristol, like a more contemporary group that he designed for visual comfort. These are all LEDs, all dedicated These are. LEDs. Lindsay has a question for you, Jeff. Sorry, you know, I was I was asking, um, I was talking to Anthea about this earlier today, uh, where we were, we were talking, I mentioned the evilness of um, the daylight bulb. And, yes. um, but however, I have found cases where, because I have certain pendant lights in my house, that have a um, really thick glass mold over the pendant light, that daylight has actually proved to be more um, more appropriate because then you're balancing out this thick glass casing for the bulb, which also has a color tone to it because the glass might be a little bit of yellow or it's sandblasted. And it did yep. change by um, the, the color tone in the room for the better in those cases. Look at you experimenting with light. That's, That's excellent. Good. Yeah, well, <laughs> I just don't want to throw out the daylight bulbs yet. Okay. Well, but uh, I'm seeing a lot of these pendant slides or, or um, you know, some of, basically uh, quite a lot of them have such a range, but uh, I'll often have that uh, casing that hides the, the bulb and what the bulb looks like. So I think in those cases, uh, perhaps, Considering the the lamp in full is really important when you're in front of the um, the light bulb aisle. Yeah. Well, and I also think it's it's personal preference too in terms of um, whether or not you want to see the light source. Evelyn and I talk about this a lot. Um, where do you, is it an experience where most most times I I think and I've learned that you want to experience the light itself, not the light source. Mm. So, for instance, yeah. you don't want to be staring at a building light hitting you in the eyes or when you walk into a particular store, you don't want to be looking into the source. Um, you want to be experiencing the light itself. Yeah, uh, something that I've uh, really had to balance well with gallery lighting. I've done a lot of um, curating and you always have that title wall and that masterpiece right in front to blow people's minds. And of course you have to light it. And the last thing that you're doing when you're curating is seeing what the perspective is regarding the lights by the front door. And then often you have to move that light bulb because everyone that comes to the opening gets blinded as soon as they walk in. And so it's a, it's a challenge. <laughs> you guys are friends. And that's yep. all part of placement and we do a lot of adjusting and tweaking. Just those little angles can make a huge difference. 
Well, similar similar to not wanting to see the light source and see the light, you also don't like seeing the lighting salesman and seeing the lights. That's why we're doing this <laughs> tour, right? Okay. You but, had a few, Jeff. You have a few fixtures um, that you shared with us earlier in the yes. week, um, where you put different shape uh, lamps in them or bulbs in them. Yes, I'm heading um, right into those actually. Okay. Yeah. Great. I thought you might be. Yep. So this is the, I'm glad that you know the showroom, Anthony. That makes me happy. I really just want to <laughs> say that. That makes me very happy. I did notice my fa one of my favorite uh, chandeliers is missing. Uh, I was hoping I missed it earlier this week, but. I, w I wonder which one it was. I'm, I'm not good with the names of them. So this is from Generation Lighting, this fixture, but I want to show you on the inside here, that's actually a light bulb. Really? That is a light bulb right there. It's hard to one see. light bulb. That is one light bulb. Yep. Wow. You definitely, you definitely can. Uh, you can definitely <laughs> have have a little fun with those. I I don't even know how to measure that light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> Get your calipers out. <laughs> Probably best that you don't. All right. Let's see here. But uh, what I was talking about, what you're referring to, Anthony, I'm heading there right now. Okay. A lot of times we just use these uh, flame tips. They're traditional. Now these are all LEDs. My showroom only has LEDs in it. I have no incandescents in here. Oh, really? Yep. Wow. Yep. So an example of regular LEDs, they look like regular candles right there, but sometimes we can do something, have a little fun, and we put like white globe bulbs in this in this one. And, and so a bit. so the base of these of these lamps is the same. It's probably a T10, That's right, Evelyn? That's, um, a G, no. that's a G16 and a half. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I should, yeah, Jeff's replacing them. So the, the socket is the same size, um, and it's just the shape that changes. That's right. That's a candelabra socket, which is an E12. So um, exactly. We're just changing the bulb. And now the white will uh, not put out quite as much of an output as the clear will, but it's not as glary. And it kind of brings a different look to it, so that's why. Right, but when the when the white one, the globe one, is turned off, you do not see the filament. When the candle shaped one is turned off, you see the filament. That's correct. You got it. And that's just something I think that a lot of people are going to have to get used to in terms of marrying it to LED. It's strange, but as uh, Evelyn was referring to, I feel like people have accepted LED more than fluorescent. I, I, I think that fluorescent had so many benefits, and I was one of the only people I knew that used it. But uh, I think that LED is a little more user friendly, and I'm sure Evelyn would agree. Yes, I do agree. So you showed the uh, a sconce there for the uh, with the twig sconce. That's I have um, a client who used those in her um, in her house. That sconce there. She's got two of those. I think I've got a picture of that house. Yep. Um, to share and um, that's a, that's really nice is that is it a metal it's a metal finish it, that's right yeah that's our that's our gilded iron finish so this is a gilding finish on top of iron mm. get up a little closer you can see it better there yep that's the branch sconce mm -hmm. that's designed by us uh, that was designed by sandy chapman who was one of the classic uh, one of the best lighting designers in history, honestly. Yes. I mean, he's designed yeah. so many. There they are. <laughs> yes. One, one thing that I also see about this home is that, you know, a lot of the color palette is white, so it makes everything look really bright. Uh, one of the questions that we have in the comments talks a little bit about the fine balance color palette. Um, I'm not sure if all the other speakers are seeing the comments, um, but there's... Oh, there we go. Here's the question. Some uh, apparently they have a very warm color palette in their home, but they're trying to balance it a little bit. Is that with fixture or bulb? How would you guys comment about that? Well, wood absorbs light like crazy. So the darker the color, the different materials absorb light where versus reflection light. So the picture that we just looked at of that woman's home, it was all white. It reflects light. So what bulbs would I recommend to brighten the space? Um, you know, the, obviously the higher output um, you, you can get. Um, if you use a warm 2700 color temperature, it's gonna bring out the richness of the color of the mahogany. 
and keep it very warm, but it's going to um, feel like you have candles in the space. Um, so I, I might bump that light up to a 3000 so it appears whiter, which we um, take as we, we kind of uh, have that commutes in our mind to brighter. Um, so that might help. And you're just going to have to keep adding light into that space because the, the wood will absorb light. So you're going to need more light in there than you can imagine. If that helps. Anthea, you have any thoughts? Oh, she's on mute, but she's going to be available. Right, one second. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I was trying to minimize the feedback. Um, when you say more light, are you referring to more fixtures and or are you referring to more lumen output um, or both? Well, when I say more light, it's more lumen output, but whatever you have for fixtures, you're going to be limited on what you can do because you still can't over lamp your fixture, meaning you can't put um, higher wattage and, and that's kind of hard. You say the 60 watt equivalent is it might be LED, but it's still a 60 watt equivalent. You should put a hundred watt equivalent in a fixture, even though it's the LED and it might only be 10 watts. Um, so what's interesting about the labeling that I just, that just occurred to me is that we've all seen the little sticker when you go to replace a light bulb mm -hmm. that says a uh, 60 watt maximum or 100 watt maximum. It doesn't ha have the stickers not caught up with the, wattage decrease or are they just still manufacturing them at that same level do we not have to worry about that sticker anymore yeah the sticker is still a thing sometimes actually what was that jeff sometimes depends upon the manufacturer sometimes the sticker is still a thing i yeah. think they're still rating ul and etl are still rating based on incandescent still but yeah. there's just fewer and fewer people using it honestly Right, right. So, so Jeff, you wouldn't suggest putting an equivalent of 150 watt bulb in, that's an LED into a fixture that says it has a 60 watt um, max, would you? You would still, would you still look at a 60 watt equivalent LED in that fixture? Oh, if it can take the wattage, that's fine. I mean, I always think that if I, I'm of the opinion, if it's dimmable, you can try it. But I, I think the most important point you made earlier is you have to have the right type of light like you can't light from one spot like that was a mistake i think many people made over the years is especially with fluorescence i mean one of the things that used to happen is they get one large fluorescent and try to light their whole kitchen with it you know and, and it's better to put the light where you need it you know so i think come on that was the lighting. best what's that that was the best yes yes okay so we found someone just who did kidding that. okay all right we know someone who did that now someone right on this call okay <laughs> Uh, I was referring to the kitchen I grew up in. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not, yeah, no negative, no negative. Okay. No. Yeah, if you saw the lighting in my home when I first moved out, you'd be like, How, <laughs> you're in lighting, really? Yeah, not good. So my, I live in a 125-year-old uh, house, and my kitchen hasn't been remodeled since maybe 25 years ago. And... Um, I have an overhead fixture with lots of output and we never use that. So I have under cabinet lighting. I've got the lighting in the um, exhaust fan. I have a lamp on my table in the kitchen so that all of my lighting in the kitchen is pretty much as task lighting. And it also creates the, a nice atmosphere because I can have just the lamp on and just the under cabinet lighting. So you're right, Jeff, having many different sources um, to create those different layers of light is what's going to make the space interesting. And then what's your task? Um, because I know Rebecca came in late. So it's a, what's your task in that room and make sure that you have the appropriate light for that task. If you're reading, you need a reading lamp. If you're, um, you know, folding laundry, then you need some um, more general lighting. Um, and if you're watching TV, you want some accent lighting in the space. So it's what what is your task? Do you have the lighting for that? And then ambient lighting and accent lighting. Yeah, 
So this is the um, this is the one lamp that I have from Jeff's showroom here in the drawing yes. room. Yep. Um, this is actually by uh, Julie O'Neill. And I mentioned earlier to all of you that one of the things I love about the visual comfort line is the dimmable switch. So I'm able to turn this lamp on, which just clicked, and then bring it up. You know, and it's difficult to see. Um, virtually, but it's a really nice warm glow and actually lights the watercolor above. That's actually a piece by Alin Carlson, who's an artist based here out of Hatch Street Studios. So but I love the fact that I can dim from the switch. Yeah. And I'm, um, from the switch on the lamp. Switch on the lamp. And so I that's our that, brightest. Anthony, when you said it's hard to see, well, don't look at the shade, look at the watercolor above it because we're- no, Oh, well, that's exactly right. Yeah. So no, it's a little bit, it's a little bit glary on my screen, That's, but in, in the room, it's mm -hmm. stunning. Just beautiful. So yeah. And it's can lighting it up as well as down. Can you dim it again for us now that we talked about the, uh, yeah. the fixed, the uh, painting above? Yeah. Very nice. Uh, so certainly creates a nice ambiance. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's the uh, that's the Alberto. So this is the Alberto chandelier right here in that same collection. I was and when you're talking right. when you're talking about bulbs, we actually put uh, white candle bulbs in it. I don't know if you can see it here to kind of make it look like it was part of the flower. Yeah, looks. Like oh yeah. yeah, this fixture is uh, very floral, but it also reminds me very much of an artichoke. Yes. Um, and also, uh, Farron Ball, uh, who has the paint and wallpaper that I carry has a wonderful paper called Lotus. Um, and I think this fixture looks really great without wallpaper too. Oh so. <laughs> I can uh, lots, of great, lots of great pairings. I can show here. I think this floor lamp is a dimmer so I can show people. Let's see if I can do this. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we can look under here. All right. <laughs> there we go. There it is. Dimmer socket. Okay. Here it is right here. See? <laughs> There we go. Yeah, very nice. And the lamp, the light bulb that you chose to put in there is, of course, a dimmable light bulb. That's right. Because if it wasn't, you'd know it would be flickering know like, that, like our friend uh, <laughs> down the hall there. <laughs> this is the last part of the uh, showroom tour here. Um, I can show those two bulbs in action in an outdoor light, but slow. Walk slow, Jeff. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> it's a great okay, show. We all, we all do it. Yeah, it's a great. Oh, look at that lamp. That's cool. Which one are you looking at? This one? <laughs> yes. Yes. Very that's cool. beautiful. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's a new lamp. That that's uh, the Hastings. That's from Carrier and Company, one of our newer designers. So, mm -hmm. that's actually uh, that's solid brass with a white rubberized paint on it, so it doesn't scratch. And then if you wow. go down to the bottom here, it's not plugged in, but that's actually a solid marble base. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. And it's that not getting tipped over anytime soon. And that's a great yeah. example of that would work really nicely in that 1920s cottage as a reef lamp. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good task lighting. Yes. Yeah. I'll make sure and let Rebecca know. Okay. Picture lights. It's knitting or needlework, needlepoint, and just sitting in a chair with that. That's awesome. <laughs> so this is that great example of the tubular shape. Mm -hmm. yeah. so this is a long tube bulb in an outdoor light, and it looks really cool. It's very dramatic. You know, yeah. So, and you mentioned earlier in the week that some of the different shapes um, are used to accommodate the fixture. So, you wouldn't necessarily want to put a very short or you know stubby uh, lamp in that particular fixture because it would lose the elegance of the height. Exactly. That's exactly like, right. Like that that tall bulb I just showed you, I got that based on the height of that Fresno lantern. So, the regular T10 right. that you were referencing earlier, I have up in this pendant up here. I put it in the Halley which is, let's see if I can get this up here and show it to you. There it is. Yeah. There's the two bulb and the Halley pendant right there. That's great. Yeah. It looks really, so, it's really dramatic. And is that an A lamp? You Oh, no, you put the little um, G. Which lamp is that next to it? That, that are you talking about in the star? No, in the fixture that um, is independent. Yeah. This one. Yeah. This one. Okay. 
Uh, that is an A lamp. That's an A15. That's an appliance bulb A15. Like. Okay, so it's a good ex example of how it, using a different light bulb can change the look of the fixtures. Great point. There we go. I'll try to do a little step back. It's That's hard to be a cameraman when you can't see the angle. I'm happy that you guys <laughs> saw any lights in this whole tour, frankly. Miraculous. Actually, we just yeah. saw the ceiling the whole time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Right. That'd be awkward. <laughs> you guys writing a note, don't invite Jeff Pomeroy back on any panel. I'm sure that's been. But uh, anyway, that's the tour. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Lindsay, I want you to know that you, you have an open invitation to join me to um, Jeff's showroom anytime. Evelyn, you're always welcome to. Uh, okay, so the drawing room is the hookup to all of this amazing lighting, noted. And yes. also on um, many other things. It's a... Uh, Really amazing addition to the historic downtown, um, but this talk was uh, really eye-opening. I mean, I can't, I, I can't wait to get started. <laughs> Very good. So hopefully, everyone took away a little bit of something about temperature or color or placement of lighting that they're able to use in their own space. So, and if you have any questions, reach out to us. Um, thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Lindsay, for joining us. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening and thank you for all who watched. Yes, thank, thank you everybody. Thank you. And thank you, Anthony and Lindsay and Jeff. That was a great tour. Yes. Thank you guys. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Be safe.